Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. In this episode, a lot of things happen. We got to see the ruined city of Shara Logoth, which was one of my most anticipated moments and it did not disappoint. These are my 5 favorite moments from episode 2, so let's jump into it. At number 5, I have Amon Balda burning an Aes Sedai alive. This is how the episode begins, a cold open and we meet these lovely and friendly people, the White Cloaks, aka the Children of the Light. I was actually going to explain who the White Cloaks are in this video, but in the episode they didn't really say anything about who they are, so I'm not gonna say anything about that. But one thing that we do know is that they really don't like Aes Sedai, because we see this man, Amon Balda, torturing and burning an Aes Sedai alive. With just one scene, Amon Balda has jumped to my number one spot on my villain scale. He is a creepy and evil dude who takes a lot of delight in torturing and killing the Aes Sedai. The actor does an exceptional job at portraying this character. In the books, Amon Balda doesn't make an appearance until book 6 of the series and he is a terrible person but he never does this. He never tortures and burns an Aes Sedai alive, but it is believable for his character. He then adds the Aes Sedai's ring to his collection of dead Aes Sedai rings, which is a pretty big collection. I do wonder what kind of strategy he uses to capture so many Aes Sedai, because Aes Sedai are strong magic users, so to capture one of them is a big deal, but this many? That is very impressive. In a later scene, we also learn that there's another group within the White Cloaks and that's the Questionnaires and Amon Balda actually works for this group. And from here, we move on to my number 4 and that's Mr. Fire Eyes. I'm not gonna call this character by his name because I'm not sure if it's a spoiler, so I'll just call him Mr. Fire Eyes. This scene had me so confused at first because Rand wakes up in the middle of the night and starts choking and he then pulls out a bat from his mouth. But then we see this person with fire on his eyes and everything falls into place. This is a nightmare and our first introduction to Mr. Fire Eyes. When Rand wakes up, he finds bats all around him and it turns out that he wasn't the only one to have the nightmare. Matt, Perrin and Ewain also met Mr. Fire Eyes and when Moraine and Lan learn of this, they give each other the oh shit look. Moraine then tells them to tell her whenever it happens again because dreams have power and I wonder what that means. At number 3 I have Weep for Manetherin. Matt and the two rivers folk began to sing a song about King Aemon and its fallen kingdom of Manetherin but they don't know who King Aemon or Manetherin are and so Moraine drops some history on them. Manetherin was a kingdom that fell while fighting the Trolloc army during the Trolloc Wars. If you want to actually see a portion of this story, Amazon Video has an animated short that shows King Aemon's downfall and you can find it on the bonus content page and I highly recommend it. This footage is actually from that animated short. Moraine also tells them that Manethrin was located on what is now the two rivers, so the old blood of Manethrin runs through them. In the book, Moraine delivers this speech after the attack on the two rivers and in front of all the survivors and in my opinion, it is one of the best moments in the entire book. After the first episode, I thought that they had cut this speech, but I'm glad that they included it here. At number 2, I have my favorite ruined city, Shara Logoth. As the group continues to be chased by the Trollocs, Lan decides to go to Shara Logoth. Moraine doesn't have a say in the matter because she is now unconscious due to her wound. As they arrive at the city, we see the Trollocs scared shitless of the ruined city and they refuse to go in. Once inside, Lan tells the story of Arethal and the origin of Shara Logoth. During the Trolloc Wars, the people of Arethal locked themselves inside their own city, but then they all mysteriously disappeared. 
In the book, Moraine also tells a really creepy story about Shara Logoth that I really love, but in this episode they didn't mention it, and that's the story of a Trolloc army that took refuge in Shara Logoth towards the end of the Trolloc Wars. This Trolloc army went inside the ruined city and they were never seen again. When people went to investigate, all they found was the Trolloc's weapons and armor, and in the walls, written in blood, they found pleas for help. The Trollocs were begging the Dark One to save them. I was really hoping to hear this story in this episode, but hey, I, uh, at least we got Weep for Manetherin and Shadow Logoth Origins, so I think we're good. Lan then tells them to not touch anything in the city, but of course, Matt doesn't listen. Matt is woken up in the middle of the night by some mysterious whispers and also someone whistling and he goes out to investigate. He sees someone or something's shadow, so of course he follows it. As he's investigating, he finds a box and inside the box, a very good looking dagger. And of course, Matt picks it up, but does he take it? We'll have to see. At this exact moment, the rest of the group is woken up by the horses who are screaming and this brings me to my number one. The evil entity that lives in Shara Logoth makes its appearance. I don't know if saying this entity's name is a spoiler, so just to be sure I'm gonna call it Entity. As the entity attacks, the only casualty in the encounter is a horse that gets eaten by it. And I was kind of disappointed by this because I was really looking forward to seeing the entity absolutely destroy the Trollocs that were chasing the group. But the group does escape, but now they are separated into three groups. I do hope that we get more Shadar Logoth and more evil entity before the season is over because we did hear someone whistling when everyone was sleeping and Matt saw a shadow figure. So I hope we get some answers as to who the Whistler and the Shadow Figure were. In the book, this entire thing plays out differently and it's kind of throwing me for a loop, which is a good thing because I do like not knowing stuff. But anyway, the ruined city of Shara Logoth and the entity that inhabits the city are some of my favorite things in all of the Wheel of Time and I'm happy at how they portrayed it. And that is it for the video, everyone. I hope you have a good rest of your day or night. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.